Frontier has finally given us some more information about the upcoming fleet carriers, including the price, and today I'm gonna go through everything we know so far. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. Game Glass allows you to take control of your ship from a tablet or a phone. But not only that, it can also give you on-screen information about systems, targets and the market around you. So gone are the days where you have no room for all your key bindings or you have to alt tap out of the game just to look up market data. Follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. If you like it and want more shouts or features, you can either buy them individually or subscribe to Glass Pass. Use offer code DTA and get 5% on any purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous without further astronomy. As you can see right here in front of me, I have a forum post by Stefan, one of the community managers at Frontier, posted just 20 minutes ago, at the time of this recording obviously. And this is all about fleet carriers, it's about some upcoming information that they're going to give us in the future, but they also reveal some information in it now. So let's go through the post. First of all, you can see here that they're announcing that on the 2nd of April, which is... Thursday next week, they will have a, I'm not sure if it's a video or a live stream, there will be information coming out in the week where they will be showcasing the fleet carriers on a video on YouTube. And there's a link for it down here. I'll post a link for this forum post as well if you're interested. Now this next section here is actually quite interesting. So it says here, since the initial reveal of fleet carriers, we've examined the concept of predefined loadouts and decided to invest additional time to ensure that fleet carriers offers the same level of flexibility and customization as other ships within Elite Dangerous. We've done this by adding additional loadout options to make your carriers unique and allow for player to player interactions like we've never seen before in Elite. This is very, very interesting. I've always thought fleet carriers would be some very static things where you had a few loadout options based on the support ship that you brought with it. It seems now that they're gonna be a lot more customizable, especially the part where they say here that they will be, they will ensure the carriers offer the same level of, of flexibility and customization as other ships in Elite Dangerous. That doesn't mean that they're gonna be just fitting size 10 power plants and size 10 thrusters and stuff like that. I don't think that's, that's necessarily the case. It's just on the same level. I mean, we're going to have the same possibilities to maybe do our own builds. But then again, they also said here that they're adding, they've done this by adding more loadouts, loadout options. Okay, so it's not necessarily individual loadouts as I thought it was before. I, I always thought it was like predefined packages of loadouts. So you could choose between, let's say, eight or ten different loadouts and that was it. But maybe it's actually that you can now have individual modules. Um, again, I'm not sure if they're just going to be larger versions of power plants and thrusters as we've seen before. It, because fleet carriers have lots of other things to them as we'll see we come further down into the post. But at least they're going to be very customizable and I'm pretty sure that you will see some fleet carrier built guides on this channel uh, in the not too distant future. Okay, so next up here they mentioned the video that we talked about at the beginning. So it actually says here, it is a pre-recorded stream. Uh, on YouTube. So they will be streaming on YouTube, but it will be pre-recorded and they will be answering questions in the chat. As I said, Frontier is working from home like everybody else, so they can't do an actual live stream from the office. So they have done a pre-recorded thing that they will then show, which I think is just fine given the circumstances. But here we have a list of some pretty uh, some hard facts about the fleet carriers. One of the most frequent asked questions about the fleet carriers, how much will they cost? The fleet carriers will be, look, it will be a lucrative investment costing 5 billion credits at launch. So that is the, the price we're looking at. So for those of you who've been wondering how much money you need to save up, there it is, 5 billion credits. Again, this is, if that includes the outfitting options, probably not. I would assume that we will have to go and buy outfitting modules for it later. Um, so we probably have to as reserve a little bit more than the 5 billion credit. Again, how much? We don't know, but if anything, if we have anything to go by, a good rule of thumb is that outfitting is going to be about the same as the ship itself. Fleet carriers are individually owned and feature 16 landing pads of various sizes for other players to dog at. Okay, we've seen pictures in the past and we have people have looked at the pictures rather than counted the landing pads. And this was pretty much, I think, where we uh, would expect it. 16 landing pads, that's a lot. With 16 landing pads, you would expect that they're expecting that to be, well, way more than four people at the same time and we've seen that elite sometimes has some issues with stability when you get up to above 10 so 
interesting to see if they've done anything or how they're going to work around that. If they either done something to stabilize the net code or if they just found another way to work around it so that these things will be stable even with around 16 people um, or up to 16 people docked at it and interacting with it at the same time. Fleet Chaos will use a new fuel, tritium, to jump from system to system. Ah, so this was something that's been discussed and something that a lot of people also thought that they're gonna add a new material that's going to be specialized jump fuel. Interesting question now, which I hope we will see on the pre-recorded live stream, is how do you obtain tritium? I personally hope that this is something you can obtain in various different ways. Um, I mean, people are gonna take the fleet carriers out for deep space explorations. They are a prime candidate for like a home base for deep exploration trips, like distant world, that, those kind of things. So I would assume the fuel would be something you could gather naturally, either through mining or collecting at planets, or I don't know, there must be a way where you collect the collectors even out in the black. But I would assume that maybe you would also be able to just go to a station, fork over some cash and buy fuel from there. That is also a, a definite option. Interesting to see how we're going to be able to get that because there are obviously fleet carriers that's going to be focused around combat and how are the combat pilots going to be getting a hold of their fuel. Maybe they can get it off NPC transport ships. Fleet carriers have a max jump range of 500 light years at one time with the ability to jump whenever the owner wants. However, they will have a built up and cool down time period between jumps. Okay, interesting. Again, of course, how long is the build up? How long is the cooldowns? Hopefully that's something they will be addressing in the video. Interesting that they have both a build up and a cooldown time. This probably means, as I read this, that means from when you click jump, there's going to be a delay before the jump actually happens. Whether that delay is in the order of minutes or hours, I don't know, but we'll have to wait and see. Same with the cooldown, you can't just make a jump and then immediately take and uh, do the next or begin to build up for the next jump you will have to, uh, to wait a cooldown so the sum of these two are interesting how much time will there be as a minimum between jumps you can manage your carrier's finance by setting tariffs and adjusting the buying and selling prices for commodities traded in the market so you can set i assume can i just set prices for like say hey i want to buy low temperature diamonds or something like that at at this because then i could see people just parking their fleet carriers in a system like Boran and offer and then begin to compete on prices for low temperature diamonds. And then once the fleet carrier has acquired enough cargo, you could then jump it to a station that had better sell price and begin to offload it. That would actually be a really cool game mechanic. If you could sit and make your money in game by basically buying the materials of the people mining it. That would actually be really, really cool. But again, you can also set tariffs, as I say here. So could that be like a fee for docking? Just if you want to dock, it's going to cost you. Maybe there are also like prices on refueling, repairs, those kind of things. Maybe those can be set here as well, which can also be dangerous because it could definitely make most of the time when you dock up, you just, I don't think about it. You just click refuel, repair, rearm without actually looking at the price. And I could see something, someone could, misuse it and just put like absurd prices for refueling and rearming and then if people don't pay attention they just click and boom 100 million just exited your your account but this is a very very interesting thing that you actually have commodity trade when you sell stuff to the fleet carrier does that material then go into a a internal cargo that let's say someone docks at my fleet carrier and sells some material do i get that material available to me or does it just disappear and i get a percentage do I get some kind of tariff for when they sell it? So I could say, well, there's a sell tax on this. Again, how do how is the prices of the fleet carriers then determined if it's not just set directly? That's actually really, really interesting how that mechanic is going to work out. And then we get some information about dates and times and when things are going to happen. As it currently stands, we are aiming to launch the fleet carrier update in June. Okay, June, nice. Um, and we'll be calling all commanders to experience fleet carriers as both visitors and owners in two upcoming public betas. The first beta will begin on the 7th of April for PC only. 7th of April, that's just in like a week and a half. That's really close. And the second beta, which will be launched on PC, Xbox and PlayStation, will take place in May. Okay, nice. So they have basically say we're going to do one beta now. They're going to get some feedback, hopefully. Then they're going to make some changes. Then we're going to see the next beta in May, where we're also going to get the console players online. And then they have another month to kind of fix that up. And then they're planning to launch it sometime in June. 
that's nice. I like that time schedule, and I like that it given itself plenty of time between betas to also fix, iterate on it, and also that they do two betas, because hopefully that means that what's gonna happen in the second beta is gonna be pretty close to a uh, to a launch uh, version of the fleet carriers. I have case, and here we have the disclaimer. Please note that these time these time frames may change slightly in the upcoming weeks, but we will keep you up to date on the specific time dates and instructions. See you out there, Commander. Wonderful post. This is interesting, and you could be absolutely sure that I'll be tuning in for the live stream on the 2nd of April. Again, I'll be posting this thread in the uh, description below. You can go down there. And if you want to keep yourself updated on what's going on in Fleet Carriers, my thoughts and opinions on it, then go down and hit the subscribe button. Like this video if you did. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.